Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my Art Journey channel. Today I'm a guest designer for Stencil Girl Stencils and I'm creating a tote bag. So I'm starting off with a, a tote bag, really cheap one I bought from our local craft store. I'm sure you could make one up yourself. If you didn't want to do this in a tote bag, you could do it on to a apron. You can certainly do it into art journal, um, any type of material. Um, you can do it on anything. Cushion cover would be really good if you can sew. Obviously, you can do this. I'm not a sewer, so being able to buy it was really good. So just to protect, because I am working on um, fabric, I slipped a craft sheet, a non-stick craft sheet inside and I've just masked off a border around the outside using some masking tape. Depending on how thick the border you want it to be, it, you could use um, washi tape or a thicker masking tape, it's totally up to you. Just press down the um, edges of the tape, whatever you're using, really carefully. So I've just done a really thin coat of gesso over this, which seems a bit silly because I'm working on a white bag but this really helps particularly if you're working say on a canvas or um, a calico bag it helps boost the color a little bit um, when you're working so I would suggest doing a thin um, layer of gesso it also helps um, the acetate or not the acetate the acrylic paint not soak in as much so now I've got a bit of a plan of what I want to do. I've got a whole heap of Stencil Girl stencils and I'm just sort of drawing out little boxes where I know I want to use some of these design elements. You saw with the face down the bottom I kind of moved it along so um, it's not quite as big as the um, original stencil. It was just sort of making a patchworky type. Um, effect. Usually when I'm doing something like this I don't actually measure them out with the stencils but because I want to use some particular um, shapes on this um, bag I did that um, for this process so you can be haphazard like I usually am and just paint squares and then put stencil designs within them or you can actually sort of draw out roughly how big or small you want your stencil boxes to be. Now all I'm doing is going in and painting an initial color in. Again I'm not really thinking too much about the colors I decided on this one I wanted to start off with some more pastel shades of colors I'm looking at pinks pinks and blues um, orangey tones it's mostly warm there's a few cool colors in there there's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm I'm choosing apart from the fact they're my favorite colors on this one I'm using Dina Wakely paints because they're what I have available but any acrylic paint will work the same. Again I'm not putting out too much paint um, and I'm making sure it's a really thin layer. I'm also not being too particular about staying in in the lines. If it's a bit wobbly that's fine because I know I'm going to be stenciling over the top. So you can be as precise or as loose as you want to be um, when you're doing this. So if you do want to use the same colors I've used here I've used Sand, carnation, blushing, apricot, turquoise, ocean, mineral, fuchsia and marine um, are all the colours I've used. Now I'm just using my heat gun to um, dry it off a little bit so it's dry to the touch. It's still going to be slightly damp but um, it's dry enough that I can do some stenciling over the top. Obviously if you've got a bit of space in your room or you've got more patience than me, um, you can leave this to dry for a little while before you continue stenciling over the top. So now I'm going in and just stenciling my patterns over it. So I'm starting off with the light pink area which is carnation I think and using some night which is sort of a, a dark navy blue colour over the top except my night ran out so I had to go and find another bottle of it. So I'm going in and when you're stenciling really really important that um, well I use a compressed sponge lots of people use different things but you'll notice I put um, the paint on my stent uh, on my sponge I tap it out in my glass mat before I put it onto my area and the reason for that is I'm working the um, paint into the sponge so I don't actually have any paint straight onto the the sponge because that's when you're going to have stuff leaking through underneath your stenciled image and won't get a crisp image. So this next stencil I think it's a Seth Apter stencil or a mask sorry it's kind of a, a combination of a stencil and a mask. 
and I just really loved that big bold you've got this um, red and turquoise are my favorite color combos which is why I chose that I'm trying to sort of repeat colors somewhat on this um, so you know using darker tones of reds and blues using some black gesso now for these larger um, shapes to make some focal images on the page as well this one was a little bit wide for me so I've just masked off some of the stencil with some masking tape and I'm stenciling it on so it's going to give me a little bit of a, a more squat version of that shape so that's a you know just because you've got lots of pattern on your stencil doesn't mean you have to use it all for this lovely um, leaf shape I'm using um, a golden paint um, which is actually called interference bronze uh, it's one of the best golds I've ever got I don't know why it's called bronze because it looks gold to me um, but it's really really metallic and it comes up beautifully in all sorts of colors and now I'm going to be using this scribbly writing I just had to work out because <laughs> I use both sides of my stencils particularly when I'm doing gel printing I often have to work out which side is actually the correct way up little hint for that is with the stencil girl stencils they've always got an etching of stencil girl in it if you can read the stencil stencil if you can read the name of the stencil it's obviously the right way up with ones like this it's pretty easy to work out but with scribbly ones it's sometimes a little bit more difficult so I decided I wanted to put some white on here too I started off with some gesso but the gesso I started out with is quite liquid and not as opaque as I wanted it to be so I've actually used the Amsterdam um, white on this which is titanium titanium white and it's just that little bit more um, intense in the white or um, opaque sorry um, so you get a really good contrast now I'm going in with a little bit of leftover paint so I had some of that night left on my um, board so I'm using it up I don't like wasting paint same with here I had lots of gold left over so I thought I'd add some accents which I actually really like and just because we've got the boxes so to speak I'm sorry please excuse it going in and out of focus my head in in the way um, just because you've got the boxes there it doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay within the boxes so you notice with these two little um, decorative pieces I've actually gone in and over onto the next section so it looks like that flower is sort of hanging down hanging into her head the other thing is you don't necessarily have to stop at one stencil in a box you can put another stencil over the top so I want to add a little bit more interest to this little box so I've got this um, Carolyn Doobie stencil and just adding those little black um, lines in there as well now once I finish this it's totally up to you whether it's finished or not I like to go back in and add some line work to my stenciling and it just helps make it a little bit more um, me you know it's me adding a little bit of um, my artwork in I would highly recommend that you actually leave this to dry for longer than I was working on but um, I was working under a little bit of time pressure I had a few hours off when my children weren't here so I wanted to make the most of it so you can see I'm using my heat gun to dry some areas so when my um, Posca paint pen isn't necessarily working on an area it's probably a little bit too damp and I'm going in and drying it these little oval shapes you can see I'm just adding in some extra lines just to make it look a little bit more interesting and um, really really simple nothing I'm doing is too difficult it's just drawing really sketchy lines over it you know you can do this I'm just using to use a white Posca paint pen for this but you could obviously use different colors as well for the gold um, leafy stem I'm going on with black and again just really really scratchy outlines and I find this just um, helps define the shape a little bit more um, particularly in the close-ups also with these little gold accent pieces I was kind of debating whether to use black or white but I ended up using black just to add a little bit of um, shadow or drop shadow to it to pop it out a bit on the red I went in now with my white pen and added some extra line detail too so again nothing you know crazy with the little circles I just put a few additional circles in with the letters I've just put a little drop shadow around the outside using the white on the um, lower left hand side of each of the shapes 
Then I decided in these little um, sections I wanted to write a little mantra to go with this, you've got this. So I am bold, I am brave, I am strong I think. I am something and I am enough. I am tired because I was feeling very tired when I was doing this. And the lady below me looks a little bit tired and I am enough. So it kind of, you know, echoes with the you've got this and then with the lady over there as well. I'm also going in and putting some line work on some of the different pieces I've gotten here. One of the things I love to do with figures is to put the whites of the eyes and the catchalls in their eyes, particularly with... Um, abstracty type faces like this it just brings them to life a little bit more so even if you just put two little dots of white in the um, pupil of the eye it will change the shape of your face it will make it look more human it's just one of those weird wonderful things about art that um, you know just that little bit of extra um, will make the difference with these shapes up the top I'm just going in again with my white pen just because I was having fun, so you can stop at any stage. I just tend to get carried away and putting in some extra line work. Again, just going around the outsides of the shapes, outlining it, and then going in and putting some little lines. So you'll see um, where I wasn't getting a really crisp white line, I was just heating up the area again because the blue underneath is still a little bit damp, so my Posca paint pen wasn't working particularly well. Um, a lot of people ask me why I use the Posca paint pens. The reason I find success for them is that it's acrylic paint going over acrylic paint. So I don't tend to find it sort of stops and starts. Also because it's acrylic paint, once it's dry it's permanent and it's going to stay where it's supposed to be. So I just find I have a little bit more success with it. Um, obviously you could try using gel pen on it. Um, but because that's what I tend to use, that's what I do. So here is the final piece being unmasked. Oops, taking off the tag. And here are some close-ups so you can actually see that line work in place. So this is a really, really easy technique to do. It's a great way to make something personalised. If you didn't want to do it on something wearable like this bag, you could do it onto a canvas, you could do it onto a little board to hang in your studio. And as I said, you could do it straight into your art journal as well. It's just a really easy technique to transfer to a load of different things. One thing I will say is I don't wash my tote bags. Um, so while acrylic paint is pretty, uh, pretty permanent, um, you know, probably giving it a good iron beforehand to just to help um, blend it all together. Um, or you could mix fabric medium in with your paints if you're really worried about it and definitely want to wash it lots. So, um, but I just... I just leave it the way it is and they've worked fine for me so far. So thank you so much for watching. Check out the um, blog links below for all the um, stencils I used. Until next time, bye for now.